This demo will show how to use CA7 as a web service scheduling client. And to do this, you'll need to define a web service job. And when a web service job executes in CA7, it will send a work request to another REST API, the server. And so when you define the job, you're going to have to say where to send this request and what this request should be. And I want to start out by looking at the web service job definition. It's a new panel, and it is where you would define a web service job. We're going to use the one that I have already set up, WS Job 10. As I mentioned, you will have to define where to send the request, and you will have to decide what's going to be in the request. Where to send the request is the target node. That's something else you'll have to define on a different panel, which I'll show you in just a moment. And then you'll have to define what else goes in that request that you're sending to the target, and that goes in the JCL member. And we'll also look at that in just a minute. First, let's look at the target. We have said when WS Job 10 executes that it should send a request to target 10. That node is defined using XN.4, which is also new. This is my definition for target 10. So you see down here, that name has a URL associated with it. And this can be about 256 bytes long. Mine is, is not, but I'm just using a dummy REST API today for demonstration purposes. When we execute that job, WS Job 10, since it has a target 10 as its target node, the request will be sent here. I also talked about some additional execution parameters that will be used when we send the request here, and those are in the JCL. Let's look at that now. These are in JSON format. And what actually goes in here will be dependent upon the REST API that you're posting work to. The dummy REST API I'm using allows a parameter of name, and it pretty much lets me put whatever I want. And I've chosen to use a, a new variable that we have defined for web service jobs, which is seven user token. And in there is a job number and the queue entry date and time. And the job number can be important to the um, REST API that we're sending the request to. And I think you'll see that a little bit later on. I'm not going to go into that quite yet. So we've looked at our job. We have our job. We know now where it's going to go. We know what execution parameters will be sent with that. The last thing I want to talk about before we execute that job is the tracking mode. Once the job is submitted, which submitted really just means we've sent a request to this target node. What happens after that depends upon the tracking mode. In the first case we're going to look at today, we're going to use tracking mode of H. And that just says if we're successfully able to send that request and we get a HTTP status of 200 or 201, then we will consider that that job has executed successfully. That job will never even go to the active queue. It will just go straight back to the request queue as normally completed. So let's take a look and see if we can make that happen. Um, I'm going to be honest, sometimes this REST, this dummy REST API that I'm using, um, sometimes it can um, have unexpected results and every now and then it will give me an error and say that I've tried too many times or something like that. So if we see that today, then I guess that'll just be an example of when we get a non-200 or 201 status code and, and the job then goes into restart status. But let's see what happens. We're going to execute this job. So we're going to send a request to this target using these parameters. And if everything's good because HTTP mode, it'll get marked complete. So we submitted job number 34, our WS job 10. 
we don't see job number 34 in here. But we do see job number 34 has completed normally. So remember I said we had the HTTP tracking. That meant if I could send that request successfully and I get the HTTP status of 200, then that job is going to immediately be considered successful and go back to the request queue and be marked complete. And that's what happened. We just didn't see that here because it happened very quickly. Let's go back to our job. Oops, I'm, I'm always used to using my own name for job. Uh, let's go back to this job and let's update the tracking mode. And now we're going to put it to M, which means manual tracking mode. So we haven't changed anything else. We're still going to go to that same target, that dummy REST API I'm using. We're still going to send the same parameters. But now because I've said tracking mode is M or manual, it will not be automatically marked as complete just because it gets a good HTTP status. So let's submit that first. Let's demand it and see how that job ends up. And that's number 36. And we see number 36 is now in the ready queue and it's been submitted. So because we said manual, nothing else is going to happen to this job until we get a manual request to change the status of this job. Now, normally, the REST API that we had sent this request to, the scheduling server, at some point in time would come back and use our REST API service, our change stat service, to tell us what to do with that job. We don't really have a scheduling server on the other side right now, so we're going to enter a CA7 command that's, that's kind of underneath the change status uh, web service, and we're going to just do that here. But again, this would not normally be entered by a person. It would normally be sent through our change stat web service. So I'm talking about job number 36, and I want to say that I would like the status to be active. So again, that would have gone through web services, eventually gotten over to CA7, and then once that was processed, we would see our web service job now has moved to an active status. Now, the, the server would have options of, of, of saying that the job failed for various different reasons. I'm going to, in this, in this demonstration, I'm just going to show that the job is going to complete successfully. I'm just going to say it completes with the, with the zero code. Um, I could, you know, I, I would have the option or the REST API would have the option to fail it with the code. But we're going to, for this purpose, we're just going to make it complete. So here we go. Did I put the wrong job number in? I think I put the wrong job number in. Oh, it's supposed to be 36. Oh, sorry about that. Obviously, you can see on the change stat does make sure th certain things happen. You know, the job has to be a manually tracked job. It has to be in the right status to make that change, as you saw from my error. So now I was able to mark it complete. So that 36, job number 36, now is gone from the queues. And now if I look at my I do now see my job number 36 has completed. So that's just a little demo to show how the web service jobs work using a target node, using execution parameters, and using a tracking mode. Um, and that concludes the demo.